Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one's entitled Blizzard Conditions at 33 Degrees in California. How is it possible? Now in a recent video by Mr. MBB333 entitled Webcam Show Blizzard Conditions in Red in California at 5 a.m. PST from February 13th, 2019, where he reports on a storm moving through California and finds that the storm brings first rain and then heavy snow to red in California, whilst at the same time the temperature is only 33 degrees in that area and thus above freezing. This is supposed to be impossible if we are to believe the lies we have been told about where rain and storms come from. In other words, that they are produced in the Earth's atmosphere. But this is not where these storms come from. These storms come from space. Clouds and rain are Planet X debris water and snow, as I have shown in Article 615 entitled Snow Turning Black When Burnt Has Alien Chemical Compounds contains not just water but atmosphere from the planets that were destroyed and turned into Planet X system stellar cores. And here are some screenshots from that video where you can see that Mr. MBB333 was reporting on this storm moving inland in California. And you can see where he found that the temperature was 33 degrees. And yet from these web cameras, you can see that there was a blizzard going on. It started out as rain. It turned into heavy snow. And you can see that the temperatures around here are even higher. That's 45 degrees, 38 degrees, 44 degrees. That's way above freezing. So this shows that the snow could not possibly have formed within the atmosphere. As if it had, the snow should have melted long before it got to red. So where did the snow come from? The Planet X system is a huge system with many star systems. Earth used to be a part of the system. Earth used to be a part of a vast galactic empire. The stars and planets making up this empire were destroyed by the Creator God. We know they had technology on them like the technology we currently have on our planet. Because surface debris pieces are coming into our atmosphere with buildings on them that look a lot like our current buildings. Long and flat pieces of rock also come into our atmosphere which do not have buildings on them. These rocks remain suspended in our atmosphere because of the way these planets were destroyed. They were destroyed by the energy being removed, gravitational photon energy. God removed his light because photons are light, his light energy out of the particles which made up these celestial objects. And here you can see a huge rock among the clouds in Peru. It's long and flat like the pieces of rock on which the cities in the sky seem to be on. And here's one of these floating cities in the sky. You can see the buildings. There also seems to be greenery around the buildings indicating that whatever seeds were on this piece of broken planet were still viable and have germinated after entering the Earth's atmosphere. And they would not have germinated whilst in space outside of the Earth's atmosphere as plants need carbon dioxide and an atmosphere to grow. And you may look at Article 584 entitled Planet X, the reason behind GMO crops for details on these, where I also explain why they cannot be holograms and they cannot be mirages. Now, uh, here are some of these objects. This is one of the Planet X system stellar cores in the Sun's corona. And this one is in the Earth's atmosphere. And these objects, therefore, are able to come into the atmosphere of solar system objects. And this one, as you can see, is starting to lose its cloud envelope. These objects enter uh, the solar system objects with cloud envelopes. And these cloud envelopes uh, have been coming in and bringing water into our atmosphere because this is what they are made of. They are made of water, liquid water, in fact. That's what clouds are. And this is also where rain comes from because once they are in the Earth's atmosphere, they absorb enough energy to eventually fall down towards the surface of the Earth as liquid water and therefore cause rain. There was no rain until the Great Flood, and you may look at Article 515 entitled Current Cataclysmic Engulfing the Earth Started at the Great Flood.
And here you have an illustration of what occurred with these objects. And the planet X planets started out as living planets, broke into pieces, and turned into a core, a dead core. This was a living core made of uh, plasma, liquid plasma, very high energy into a dead core, which is not able to create matter anymore, surrounded by debris pieces, for the same reason that the blob of plasma ejected by Galactico turns into a globular cluster with millions of stars. That's how the globular cluster starts. It starts as a blob of plasma ejected by a galactic core, and it then uh, starts creating more matter, and so it starts using up some of its gravitational energy. As the gravitational energy drops, it fissions into smaller and smaller pieces, and it then becomes these millions of stars. So a drop in gravitational energies causes matter to fission into smaller pieces. And this is what happens here because of the drop in gravitational energy. So the Creator God left some energy in the planet X system objects, however, which allowed them to remain as whole objects, which shows that he intended to use them. So he left a basic amount of light energy or basic amount of mass in them, which allowed them to gravitationally interact at a basic level only. At this level, matter is only attracted to other matter created by the same, the same parent matter. So all the matter making up the planet outside of the core remained connected to the core because this core had created all this matter at the time that the planet formed. And you may look at Article 560 entitled Planet X reveals that planets are smaller versions of the parent stars. And this diagram illustrates how a star goes on to create a planet. So um, through observation, um, I have deduced that uh, what happens is the core creates its own matter and ejects it outwards. So a core ends up outside of the star, uh, the parent star, and once it does, its environment is too low in gravitational energy, so it starts creating matter. So it uses up some of its gravitational energy, so you can see uh, the part of the core that was very high energy, it's actually a part of the original a core inside uh, that was inside the star, it starts decreasing its size because that some of its energy goes into producing outer layers. And so it ends up creating a whole uh, planet. And this agrees with Halton Arp's galaxy observations. And so a star ejects liquid plasma, which condenses into a core, which then ejects its own material so that the outer layers of the planet form. But the gravitational energy which allows matter to create matter and energy to flow across the object was removed. This energy flows across as a result of electrons being repelled by the core. The core lost its gravitational energy and thus the ability to inject gravitational energy into electrons. So electrons which carry gravitational energy no longer flowed across the body. The matter also lost mass energy, the part which I called density mass in Article 612, which allows particles to interact in a way which allows the matter they make up to be in different states with different associated densities. Particles with more density mass attract other particles around them more strongly and thus seem to have more mass and to exist in a higher density state than particles with less density mass. Loss of density mass causes particles making up each layer to have less effective mass than they had before. Thus the core ended up with much less effective mass and at a lower density state, which turned it from being in a, a hot liquid plasma state to being solid rock. Magma further out from the core also lost density mass and gravitational energy and also solidified and became solid rock, but its final density state was proportionately lower than the core's.
The layers of rock around the core, having lost most of the effective mass, lost the major part of the attraction they felt toward the core. This caused them to spring back away from the core and thus break into pieces. But since there was still a small amount of gravitational attraction, the pieces did not continue moving out into space. They were still connected, but by a much weaker gravitational force than before. Magma thus turned into solid rock and broke into pieces, and surface pieces that were already solid rock just broke into pieces. All lost their ability to interact gravitationally with matter, making up the celestial object and the core. Thus, when they came into the Earth's atmosphere, they behave as if they have the same density as a gas in the Earth's atmosphere atmosphere and thus remain suspended in the Earth's atmosphere. Water forms deep inside a planet and the water that was deep inside these planets also lost gravitational energy and mass density. So its density state changed from highly dense water as only exists deep inside a planet to liquid water as is found on the surface of a planet but their mass state became so low as that of water found only in the atmosphere like all the other pieces of the celestial object, including the core, which is why clouds remain suspended in the Earth's atmosphere. The loss in gravitational energy meant that the water lost cohesion and turned into small droplets of liquid water. Water from closer to the core turned into big drops, and water from closer to the surface turned into tiny drops of liquid water. The atmosphere also moved away from the core and expanded into a much less dense gas. The loss of gravitational energy also caused it to freeze solid, but because of the low density it turned into what we call snow. Water on the surface turned into large drops and froze solid into ice, which we call hail. This shows that heat is connected, is connected to gravitational energy. Surface and atmospheric particles were in a density state where gravitational energy had given rise to fast motion or kinetic energy of the particles, which is the same as heat. So removal of gravitational energy led to this matter freezing solid. So surface water turned to hail uh, to hailstones, and atmospheric water froze with the atmosphere turning into snow. And here you see an image, it's a stereo HI1A image. And what you can see is one of the Planet X uh, system stars moving in towards the sun. It's a Planet X system star that's now turned into a stellar core because it died. And it looks uh, bright because it's actually covered in cloud. It's covered in its own cloud envelope. And it's followed and surrounded by its uh, its outer layers that are on now debris pieces and the debris pieces are covered in cloud envelopes as well. That's why you can see this white, uh, lighter matter around sometimes darker uh, circles. And this is because the clouds sometimes uh, are toroidal in shape and you can sometimes see the part of the object um, here and there. And this, so this object turned out to be larger than the sun. So this had once been a very large star and it was moving in towards the sun here. And the fact that this was large and must have been a star and the fact that it had uh, all these cloud envelopes uh, means that there is a lot of water inside stars, just like there is a lot of water inside planets. Now the debris pieces are able to absorb gravitational energy from solar system objects until they reach a mass level equivalent to their current density state. And the one they had when their gravitational energy was removed. So clouds because they are made of liquid water, can absorb energy until they reach the mass equivalent of liquid water on Earth, which then causes them to fall to the ground as rain. The same thing happens with hail, rock pieces, and snow, depending on how much frozen or liquid water is in it. Snow with no water in it would sublimate at high altitudes and mix with Earth's atmosphere.
Thus, the debris pieces can become a part of a solar system planet, but the cores of these planets cannot because they are poles and are thus always repelled by the Earth's core. And you may look at Article 514 entitled Stellar Cores or Gravitational Poles or Super Protons. Stellar cores have concentric layers of increasing density inside, increasing towards the center, which will be at a lower density than before, but will still act as sources of gravity or gravitational poles. The stellar cores will gain gravitational energy and attract matter from the Earth's atmosphere. And if they are large, they will attract magma from inside the Earth until they reach the mass equivalent for their current energy state. Thus, cores as large as Earth's core, which come to Earth, eventually turn into Earth moons, like the Earth's moon, which is most likely the object that caused the flood. And you may look at Article 5 to 6 entitled Planet X and the Moon. The moon has not always been in the sky. Stellar cores that go to the sun turn into gas giants. And you may look at Article 5 to 3 entitled Planet X and the Solar System, Jupiter and all gas giants, or recent acquisitions. And here you see Jupiter and the moon. So Jupiter and the moon were once Planet X system stellar cores, which became re-energized stellar cores. They will have a large core, but appear to have a small one because of the density state of the core which is low. So they will appear to have a lot less mass, the, the core inside here, than um, we, we would gather from the number of particles in it. So these cores um, are still dead. They cannot create matter and thus cannot produce magma and volcanoes. And that's one of the ways you can figure out that you have a stellar core here. They're not active. There are no volcanoes on these objects. So in conclusion, storms come in from space. This is why you can get a blizzard in above freezing conditions. Clouds, rain, hail and snow are all different debris from the planet X system, which has been invading the solar system for thousands of years. The debris pieces can become a part of the solar system planets, but the cores must become separate objects orbiting solar system objects through a process of energy absorption from solar system objects, which allows them to get up to a mass equivalent to their current density state. Clouds become liquid Earth surface water at which time they fall as rain. And these are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.